Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today we have cameraman Caleb with us. So excited it's summertime and he's off school. He's gonna be helping me a lot more. We have a vehicle here behind me. Some of you may recognize this is a 1990 Lincoln Town Car that got a fuel pump a few months ago. Everything's been fine. The car is now back again with a no start. Symptoms were he's driving it, no problem. Parked at the fire hall, went into for a while and came back out and it did not restart. So right away, my first thought was the fuse, if you remember, uh, we had a blown fuse on this at the same time we had a faulty fuel pump, but we caught it for sure. I caused the blown fuse. So real important at this stage that we were able to figure that out through video that I was the cause of that. Um, so I am a little bit concerned about that. We'll go in that direction. I'm just gonna start right away checking fuel pressure. It was mentioned to me that they sprayed some starting fluid in it and it seemed like it wanted to start. So that's suggesting a fuel issue. Um, I have done nothing yet. All I did was grab my fuel pressure gauge and I grabbed my test light for checking for spark and that's the direction we're going. We'll start with fuel pressure. Nice afford again to give us a service port that makes this type of test very, very easy to do. I may not start with a fuel pressure test during a no start in all circumstances, it really is gonna be dictated by whether or not I have a service port. So, need to be careful working with fuel. Just a reminder of that. So, when I check for spark next, if I check for spark, I need to be aware that I have a little bit of fuel that spilled when I connected my gauge. You need to be conscious about fuel, especially when you're checking for spark. All right, let's keep you, keep you focused on the gauge here, Caleb, and I will go in and crank this thing, yeah. First thing I'll do before I start or crank it, I'll just turn the key on. We should have a prime. That gauge didn't even move, did it? Cranking it. So no fuel pressure. Uh, we can test for spark. Again, I want to remind you guys about testing for spark after you're checking for fuel. Uh, there's been people that have gotten really, really badly injured by not being aware of that type of thing. And uh, I'm good there. That little bit of fuel spillage when I connected my gauge has dried. I'm gonna check for spark right from the ignition coil itself. Just wanna see if we have it. Just gonna go to a, um, a ground. It doesn't even have to be what I've always say a known good ground. It is connected to the block that's good enough. This high energy spark will have no trouble jumping the gap to my inline, I was gonna say inline spark tester, it's my test light. Um, hopefully that stays still, if that doesn't, you know what, let's do use something different. Just because this will free up a hand, I'm gonna use it, an inline tester. Hopefully you'll still be able to um, see the spark. What it's gonna do is leave the tower, go through my jumper into here, and then we should see the gap when I crank this over, we should. Yeah, good. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, we have spark. It's just leaking everywhere. The tool, I think, was shorting it out, Caleb. Yeah, I um, heard something, like it sounded like it was Some cracking, some, yeah. yeah it's just cracking, not but... well insulated here, and that's gonna jump to ground. So if I keep this insulated, I might be able to show it to you. We definitely had spark. I heard it, I just didn't see it. Here, crank it. it one more time for me. All right. Do it again. All right, hold on. I, I It was there for a second, then it wasn't. I wanna change my tool here, Caleb. I'm going back to the test light. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna be my cranker again I'm gonna be cameraman using a incandescent test light go ahead crank it okay one more time let's just make sure go ahead 
Okay. All right, good. You'll get to see that in the edit, Caleb. We definitely have good spark. I've seen it before. Yeah, and just verifying really what we're doing here, guys, is just thinking about inputs, what the computer needs to turn this fuel pump on. And the fact that I have spark is suggesting that we don't have an input problem, a power problem, things like that. I'm going right after the fuel system again. Deja vu here, Caleb. So housing, part of the fuse box. This comes apart, push this clip in, these slide out. We have a main power relay, which is this guy, and then we have a fuel pump relay, which is this guy. I'm gonna grab my U-Activate tool. So fuel pump relay is this one. Matching up our tool. I will make sure I link the other video we did where we used this thing, but what we're doing is matching up relays. Mm -hmm. You should maybe talk about that middle thing because they're gonna ask about it again. Good point. Uh, Caleb just mentioned about the middle pin. Uh, this middle pin is not being used on this design. If you uh, were to look down inside of here, we might be able to get the shot. If not, it's in the other video. It's actually an empty pin in the center. Yeah, you can, you see. can see metal blades, except the middle one's empty. So it's not being used on this one. Yeah, the other video, I'm not going to go through all the theory and operation here, Caleb. Yeah, I know. We can, and for the rest of you guys that want to know more about the operation of the system, um, you need to watch part one of this, we'll call it, where we went through the whole system. I drew the diagram. I'm not doing that. We're, we're just kind of rolling through this one, hopefully quickly be able to identify this fault. Uh, one of the things I had asked my friend Pete, we're at Latour's Auto, is did he change the fuel filter the same time he changed the pump? And he did say yes. So. You can have a plugged fuel filter ruin a brand new pump. Um, the other thing too would be a fuel pressure regulator that's stuck closed, which would max out your pressure, can also kill a new pump. But we did after checks and our pressure was right in the normal range. So I'm not concerned about that either. One other note, as you see me sweating here, it is super hot today. It's like, upper 80s and like 100% humidity. Thunderstorms in the area. So my apologies on that. Okay, some preliminary tests we will do. It, it, there's a real possibility this is another bad fuel pump. Because of the plugs? Um... No, uh, well that's what I was mentioning. Not because of <clears throat> a plugged filter or a bad pressure regulator but because of cheap parts um, you'll have that with these aftermarket fuel pumps at times they're just junk all right test light to ground I want to make sure that my light lights okay good ground on my light let me turn the key on first Okay, key is on. And my power relay on this, again, I wanna refer you to the other video. I'm not gonna run through all the diagram stuff with this, but I'll just do a quick rehash. The power relay, which sits here, provides control side power to my fuel pump relay. And so right now with my key on, I should have, this relay should be closed and I should have power on one of these two guys, and I do. So there's power to the control side of the fuel pump relay, okay? And that would be these, these two sides of the relay would be control. Yep. And these two sides are load. So I have my control side power, that's good. Number two would be when I crank this, Caleb, you're gonna tell me the computer should be grounding the other side. So this is power. See my lights lighting. This will be a controlled ground so you see my incandescent light is actually grounding that LED. That's what the computer should do. When I crank this over, we wanna see that light turn on. Okay, tell me if it does. Cranking it. All right, that means the computer's controlling the relay. This is all pointing toward another pump issue. That sucks, man. All right, so load side, we're on the load side of the circuit now. One of the, the two load side pins, which are up here on this tool, should be hot. 
And so re what we're measuring now would be these two guys. So that one's hot and then this one would go to the pump itself. And that one's not hot until I flip the switch, which really simulates the relay closing. Uh, it is the switch. I'm powering up the fuel pump right now. And as you can see, no fuel pressure. That's a pump. What really sucks, Caleb, is, yeah, this is a pump again. What sucks is where we are, get a shot of our location. Um, last time we were in the garage, we were able to jack up the rear of the car and get underneath where the pump is. That's not happening. That's not happening. Um, okay, one more check we need to do would be the continuity uh, front to back. So this test, if you remember, it's gonna be battery positive. Same test light. Going battery positive. When I find a ground, my light lights. This test light should find a ground through the pump motor itself. And the fact that that's not lit means we have an open circuit between here and the pump itself or the pump. In other words, that test light should be traveling down the power feed wire right now. So test lights connected to battery positive. I have no power going there. Circuit's off. All I'm doing is running back to the back. I'm trying to describe this to you without drawing it. I'm struggling here. Um, that is the wire that goes to the fuel pump. And, and with that circuit not being turned on, that test light should find a ground through that power wire into the positive brush of the fuel pump, through the motor, out the negative brush, and to ground, that test light should light. This fuel pump does not have really any resistance with it sitting still, my test light should light. So I'm gonna try, Caleb, I don't know that I can get under there, but I'm gonna try to wiggle that connection, make sure that that connector didn't fall off. Yeah. Otherwise, he's putting another pump in this. Yeah. This might be one where you beat on the tank, too. Yeah, I remember when we did the last one, going from this then down to the... Like yeah, that's where we are again. This there. is... It's the exact same. It, it, it is the exact same checks. The only difference now is we, didn't, we don't have a blown fuse where we went yeah. down a weird path for a while yeah. because we blew the circuit. Oh, man, that sucks. Uh, let me eyeball it first. You can stay focused on the gauge while I'm laying under the I car. I might be able to fit under better. I mean, I think you I might be. Let me look though. I just want to see what. Let me get up, grab my light. No, there is no way that I'm getting to that. I'm too fat. It's plugged in. It's good. Well, it's plugged in. What's that light up there, Caleb? I'm gonna wiggle this connector. Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. Still nothing. Still nothing. It's not unplugged, that's for sure. I'm gonna beat on the tank. No light? Nothing. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> Stupid. All right, I'm gonna need you to be under there with me, see if we can get a shot. What I'm gonna do up here is I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this switch on, which is gonna manually run the pump, okay? Uh, switch my test light. That test light did not light because I'm on battery positive. Switching my test light back over to ground. Okay. Um, right now we're sending power back there. And again, no fuel pressure. Pump circuit's energized. Uh, no reason to do an amperage measurement because my test light wouldn't even light. I can tell you right now it's going to be zero amps. Um, just wanted to show you that this circuit is lit yep just another bad pump caleb i was hoping it'd be something stupid you know yeah not stupid but something that would be more beneficial to our viewers than this this is basically just a recap of what we did in the last this time. is a recap of what we did i know a lot of you right now are thinking well what caused it 
That's a good question. I'm gonna make sure that I eyeball that fuel filter. Two things, two things I've seen, well, we could talk about three maybe, but causes of a new fuel pump going bad, okay? One, your inline fuel filter is plugged. So with a plugged inline fuel filter, that fuel pump is working super hard the whole time, okay? So we always change an inline filter when we do a pump. Number two would be a stuck closed fuel pressure regulator. A stuck closed regulator would max the fuel pressure. This was a 30 to 40 PSI system from what my memory tells me, and that would put the pump around 60 to 80 PSI all the time, and that would kill a pump. I've seen pumps die literally in five minutes from a stuck closed fuel pressure regulator. Story with that, real quick, car comes in the shop when I used to work for Pep Boys. Um, it was a, a uh, Dodge Daytona Turbo. I remember the car too. 50 PSI was nominal pressure for that system. Car came in, no fuel pressure. Did all my checks that I'm showing you here. Powers, grounds were good. Replaced the pump, started the vehicle, changed the inline fuel filter, started the vehicle, and cleaning up all my tools, check for leaks, everything's fine, right? No fuel pressure when the car came in. By the time I cleaned up all my tools, the car died. Five minute run time. Redo my checks, no fuel pressure. I'm like, what happened? What's going on? Brand new fuel pump died in five minutes. This time, the mistake I made was not checking my fuel pressure after. When I put a gauge on it with the new pump, second new pump, 90 PSI was my fuel pressure. 90 to 100 PSI. So what killed the brand new fuel pump? What's up, George? All right, buddy. What killed the brand new fuel pump was a stuck closed fuel pressure regulator. As sweat pours down my face. Do you follow that, Caleb? Yeah, Does that make that. sense? I mean, without knowing, you know, Caleb, you need a little bit more theory operation type stuff on fuel yeah. systems. Yeah, but I get. But, you know, yeah. this would be, um, for you guys paying attention, this would be chapter 15, chapter 16 material in my book and in my classes, Scanner Danner Premium, available on my website. Um, a little bit more background knowledge of the design of this system would be needed for you guys to follow me there, but that would be the second cause of a brand new fuel pump going bad would be a stuck closed regulator. When we put this pump in from the first video, my fuel pressure was fine, so we're not worried about that. I mean, unless the regulator got stuck again or unless the regulator got stuck in between the two pumps being changed, which I doubt. Uh, the third one would be a power and a ground issue. Uh, a power or ground problem to a pump, to an electric motor is not good for the motor and that can prematurely kill it. So I, I wanna make sure we got a good power and a ground in the back. Again, the pump circuit is loaded. I have my switch on, that's where we're going. And then we'll do a final wrap up on this. This needs a pump. What the, where are we filming at? Hang on. Up there. What the slope of it? I don't know if I can fit. Well, you can get the camera in there, maybe. Maybe. Got it. Do you? All right, I'm using my Phil's electrical probe. Freaking love this tool. I'm gonna pierce a wire. I'm not gonna be able to get great shots, but I can see generally what you're doing. Make no apologies here for where we are. I'm poking a hole in this wire. <laughs> They're tiny holes, and we will put a little liquid tape on them when we're done. So get over yourselves. I'm trying to find a known good ground is my next task. This should be hot. Nope. Uh, let's get a better ground here. Gotta love the rust belt of Pennsylvania. Last time we used the power probe to get a good ground back here and I forgot my power probe, it's at home. That really sucks a lot right now. Come on. Okay, now I'm frustrated. It happens real quick. I have like limited places to put this. 
I, I can't find a good ground, Caleb. I am confident I don't have a broken wire back here, but could be wrong. This test is critical. I'm just trying to make my freaking test light light. I can kind of see your light in the camera. It's not lighting. No, it's not. But I think that's because I don't have a good ground. Okay. This is suggesting we have an open circuit here, Caleb. Yeah, I see that. Um, but I, can't, I gotta trust my ground. If I can't trust my ground, then I, I can't, I can't do this. That. I'm pretty sure that that light would be lighting on this ground. Yep, we have no power back here, dude. Are you sure about your ground? No, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm not getting power so we'll go to the inertia switch in the trunk next maybe somebody backed into him maybe. something new that you don't know about Caleb it's called an inertia switch let's get you out told here. me about it in Ford's actually specifically that yeah you get in an accident your car stops running it's yeah the inertia switch thing they're not all in the trunk on this car I believe it is but on some of the some of the Ford trucks, it's in the passenger uh, under the underneath the glove box, like right kick panel area. Let's open the trunk. Be so sweet if that's what it is. Well, he did say he went to the car ran fine, and then he went to um, went to a parking lot, and then he came out and it wouldn't start. It's possible somebody backed into him. Had a little mishap here, guys. We we have a mic change now. Um, I was walking past the mirror, and I I ripped my microphone out. Uh, it just ruined it. So I'm now using my phone audio, or we're gonna use the camera audio. I'm not sure which one. My apologies on the change up. Let's continue where we left off. And now that I'm agitated about breaking my microphone, I need to focus back on this car. Um, Two things. One, we had a shift in direction, right? We didn't expect to see no power back there. Two, maybe I do have power and I never had a good ground on my test light. Um, it'd be nice to run my power probe back there, but I didn't bring my power probe today. So lucky me, I didn't do that. Um, so here's what I do. When I run into a situation where I have a change up in direction, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything properly. So I'm going to back up a step and the step that I'm going to do, I want to make sure that my tool is still providing power back to this pump. So test light to ground, find a power, test light lights. This goes back to the pump and you see that is lit. So that would be step one. Whenever you find something that is unexpected, back up, check yourself. That's what this whole field is about double and triple checking yourself. I am sending power to that pump. Let's go find that inertia switch now. This is my inertia switch right here. And it is not tripped, at least visually. If it was tripped, this red button at the top would be out and it's not. Okay? Yeah. I don't know if you can see the red button. A little bit. All right, we're gonna check power on these two wires. We should have power on both. If we have power here, that means we gotta go back underneath. I'm actually hoping that we don't. Damn it. That's one. We should have power on both. It should be going in and out. And it would be the red wire under there too, by the way. Power on both. It's not an inertia switch. So now we're back to, I just didn't have a good ground. And unfortunately I gotta go back underneath. It might actually help Caleb with the camera now that we don't have that big mic thing sitting on top. Maybe we can get a better camera shot. No? That wasn't the issue. I'm gonna get a jump, I'm gonna get a jumper wire 
and run it to here and run that underneath. Jumper wire, jumper wire, test light. Make sure we got power here again, which will test my ground. Good. So we have a known good ground now on my test light. I'll take that underneath with me. Okay, I'm going to the red wire, pink wire. Pretty sure that it's pink. I got no power here. That's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome for for us because we're not done with this video. Let's try the yellow one. I, it was red up there. It changed color here on us. Yeah, I got I got nothing back here, dude. Maybe it's black. Let me check the black ones. I, I don't think it would have changed to black. I got nothing on my pink and my yellow. And I know my ground is good now. I was going to add something here for those of you that think I should be using a voltmeter instead of a test light. Remember, my test light had no continuity to ground back here. So all I'm really doing, this is a go, no go type test. Nothing on that black. I don't need a voltage reading. My test light is 100% accurate for what I'm using it for right now. Just in case I'm just not making contact, I'm unplugging this in case my probe isn't actually piercing the circuit. Yeah, I got nothing. All right. Sorry you didn't see that part. I got nothing on any of the pins. We definitely have an open, Caleb. Now we gotta find. Now we gotta find it. So I was just thinking about these Fords and their inertia switches. And I'm thinking, well, our colors are different down there. I don't know if I'm yellow or if I'm red, but I know it's one of the two, and, or, or yellow or pink. And look at the colors here. We have red with a yellow tracer and a solid red. So those aren't even my colors. Ford sometimes puts the inertia switch on the control side of the relay not the load side so I believe that that means we're going back up front and we're doing checks right underneath at the relay center um remember red and then yellow red okay follow me so my control side of this relay is let me just get my bearings here hold on Okay, load side. Yeah, that is on the control side. So control side is my is my yellow red and then blue with an orange and my load side it is the pink wire right here, Caleb. So this would be power feed in, power feed out. Control side power. That's the inertia switch. That's the color change. It is the pink wire that we're dealing with. We should have power on that pink wire and we do not. So now it boils down to finding this open, finding opens in a circuit are not always fun, especially when I'm out here. I want to, I want to eyeball that underneath again real quick. Um, I'm just kind of looking here and where this harness goes. This could end up not being fun. I just want to have all this harness. So it goes into the trunk area or under the rear seat. So that's good to know that that's inside the car. And it's definitely this pink pink and black get 
get one more voltage reading there or test light reading. I got nothing. Not lighting my test light. All right, so I want to go in that area of the car, maybe, or under the hood. Areas of heat and vibration is what I always say is keys to finding open circuits, like rub through marks. It looks okay out here. I think we're done here at least. I think it comes through in here. So this is where the harness comes up, is this one. It goes this way, under the seat that way. I'm not gonna pull the interior of this apart unless I have to. All right, back up here. Areas under the hood to me are highly suspect. This is where we're gonna have our heat and vibration thing. Just gotta figure out the direction that harness goes. Would hope to know for sure. I just made, look. Whoa, what? Look, we have fuel pressure. How did you do that? I grabbed this harness right here. Right here, I grabbed this harness right here. I was looking at it here. I knew it went that way and given the wiring from the trunk come up the side of the car, I'm like, it. okay, it's gotta be in here. Look, I heard yeah, it. right now the car is gonna start. Here, I'll start it. Nice. This thing never idled good, has a stalling issue. My, my problem is right here. I, it was cool that all right right now my pumps running we just got to find this, where this wire is bad awesome. unfortunately it's like in this main harness some of you are thinking well aren't you hurting that car having that pump running all the time I am not I am not that uh, pump would run all the time. The fuel is just being cycled from the back to the front, back to the tank. I'm not flooding the engine. There, I just shut it off. Back on, back off. Good, at least I can recreate it. My question is, here, actually, I can show you guys, give you a visual, Caleb, because I know the camera's not picking it up. Test light to ground. This is my pump feed circuit right there, so you can focus on that test light. Watch, I'll wiggle this harness. You can watch the light. Or wait, no, I gotta do this differently. I need to shut the circuit off. Circuit's off now. Test light to battery positive. Test light should be lit if we have continuity through the pump motor. When this light lights. Right, right there. Okay. Get a shot of where my hand is and where I'm wiggling. Okay. And look at the light. Isn't, cool, isn't it cool? I mean, what's cool about this, Caleb, is you got to see what a faulty pump looks like, right? The last time this car came in, you got to see what a faulty pump looks like. Um, one of the things that will kill a pump would be low voltage to it. Could be that this thing was running, that this problem was here for a while and that pump, the old pump was running off low voltage and that would be where the test light wouldn't be great because you can't tell full voltage by using a test light. But you see that there is 
the difference for us in our diagnosis before, and this is to you guys too, is we didn't make a bad call. I, I proved that we had good power and ground using the test light back at the pump and we had an open circuit proving our open was in the pump itself. Now the car's back, no power back there. It's possible that this did not, this is not the cause of the previous fuel pump failure, but this is absolutely a different problem. And it's cool that Caleb gets to see it. He's, same car, different problem, right? I think it's cool. And I know the rest of you guys are thinking that too. Um, let's be clear about what I'm doing now. This circuit goes back to the pump. That's my power feed. My test lights go into battery positive. When I, so I don't have the pump running anymore. When I, when I wiggle this harness, and that light lights, what that's doing is that pump, so I don't wanna mess up my window of opportunity here either by talking, but what that's doing is that pump, it went, once that wire makes con uh, contact, that light's finding a ground through the pump the itself, yeah. All right, so let me try to isolate this a little bit. This is a very unusual spot to have a harness problem. This cruise control unit's in my way. Should unbolt it, get it out of here. Any questions, Caleb, about anything we're doing? No, nah, it's pretty straightforward. You yeah, you don't have, you can't find ground with it because like, like through the, I don't know, it makes sense. Yeah, no, you're right. I, there should be, you so know. Be it, find ground down through the pump. That's you, right, that's right. And you checked everything else and everything else is good. And are any questions on what we're doing this time as a pair, as opposed to last time? No, it's I mean similar. Well, I mean it's the same checks. It just the results different. Yeah. Last time we were we were here, we had we had power, we had ground at the pump, we had an open circuit, just like we do now. The difference being, the we open had circuit was because of the pump. Last the pump time, itself. Time you got it. This time it's an open in the harness. Um, it's kind of tough to say that this open in the harness wasn't here before. I believe that this problem, we'll, we'll see how badly corroded this wire is. This doesn't happen yeah, overnight. I believe this problem was here. And that's what killed the last It's one. possible. It's possible. You know, pumps that run with low voltage, um, the reason why it can hurt a pump, the theory is that the DC brush type motors or just electric motors in general when they're spinning slower they have less resistance and so they'll have more amperage and there's a, a point where you can have a weak power feed at least in theory I, I can't say that I've ever seen it I've never measured a a fuel pump that had a too high of amperage and found myself saying, oh, that's from a bad power feed. But if you think about it, um, it's really kind of too difficult to talk about in this setting, but you can have the electric motor from a, a weak power feed spin a little bit slower, which makes its overall resistance drop and amperage increase. And so the pump runs a little bit higher amperage from a bad power feed. Seems contradictory, but it is technically possible. I don't think this is what killed it, Caleb. I think we just found another problem. I gotta say though, if you were in the field and this car, I, I'm just trying to think. If I, if I was at Pep Boys when I got paid flat rate, so I would've got paid, I would've got paid 1.2 hours diagnostic time for this job put a fuel pump in, no problem, car goes away. This is about two, maybe three months later. Two to three months later, the car is back on the hook. If I'm not at work that day, or even if I am at work, this would this would come back to me, it would be a comeback. It's, it's a no start. It might not be, it depends how they wrote it up. I guess my point is, you might not be getting diagnostic time for what we're dealing with now. People would look at this as maybe you blew the first call. I have evidence, we have video evidence we did not. That pump was bad. 
I'm just trying to help you guys that are working in the field right now. This is, I'm not wrestling with this at all because one of the things that I do here for Pete is uh, now that I bring you guys with me, I, I don't even charge him. This is not a money thing for me as far as how we're building. I'm just trying to teach you guys as if I was still bouncing garage to garage to garage and charging them. I'm telling you back in the day before YouTube and all this stuff and my premium channel, I'm trying to invite you guys over there and you know that's where I'm looking to make my money now, not necessarily on the cars. The cars just become my, my subjects. And so it's a win-win for Pete and I. I'm not charging him. If I still was, this is a separate diagnostic fee. This is a separate fault. Would you agree with me, Caleb? Yeah. Even though maybe it was a contributing factor on the original pump failing, maybe it was, we can debate that. This is a separate problem. This is a separate charge, okay? To each his own, how you wanna handle it. That's how I, I'd, be, I'd be billing for this. All right, let's see if we can find this break. So I moved this, the harness I was wiggling, the weird part, Caleb, See if you can get a shot like in here. I was wiggling this guy. And the weird part, if you look at the harness, it goes into here and then goes down into this big harness. And then that goes to the engine computer. It shouldn't, that wire shouldn't even be in here. But watch. Here, let me get this over next to us. Right there. Right there. So you see I'm not even touching I'm not even touching the big harness. And that puts me toward this connector right here. Yep, this connector right here, right here. See it? Can you get them both in the shot? My hand and the test light? Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in on your hand so I can show the connector better. That's this connector. All the wires are all black this wire right here the one right on the end are you saying that because of the color of it? yes it's uh red and yellow that guy right there is my pump wire yeah, i see it so you gotta find where it's broken i don't I, it was the connector itself gotcha. let's open this connector up and take a look so there's corrosion in the connector yeah or just pin contact and the connector looks fine. Let's see if you can see it. Can you? It would be this, this pin right here, and then this pin, the top right pin right there. All right, let's try and zoom in on that. Okay. And then the same on the other one, top left. There's no corrosion there. This could just be pin contact I mean it, it was definitely when I was touching that connector I was making it I was making it uh, make and break contact so I don't believe that that it's the wire I, I really think the yeah and you can the rest of this you can stay zoomed out I want to make sure that you're on my test light you know, you get the idea of where I am. So my issue, Caleb, was in this connector. And literally just unplugging it and plugging it back in took care of it. And so it really involves maybe snugging that pin up. There's no corrosion there. And now I can't make it drop out anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give it back to him show him what I found. No, he'll at least know what to do if it does it again. And if anything, what we'll do is we'll cut this wire. I would, if it's my car, I'd do the same thing. I'd let it go. And if I have this problem again, I'd take these two wires, cut it here and here, and I'd run a permanent jumper. Oh. The connector's not necessary. Yeah, it just... It I mean, it helps if you're changing an engine or harness or something, but... Yeah. There'd be no problem bypassing that. I'm not gonna mess around with this connector. I don't care enough to. The nice thing is I was able to prove that it wasn't a wire issue. Yeah. I was able to touch the connector itself and make it act up. I'm just glad we weren't 
searching around through the wire for like a yeah. break or something. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Our issue was right there. That's cool. Now, if I can get in here easily and tighten that pin, I'll, I'll try to do that. And I do not believe that this was related in any way, shape, or form of the previous fuel pump dying. Yeah, because it's not like it was heavily corroded. Cor right? Correct. It, correct. It was not corroded at all. All right, make sure you, that you're getting what I'm doing here, Caleb. Yep. So there's a little locking tab here. So I'm going to pull on that and then pull on the wire on the other side. There it is. There you go. All right. So pin contact, just that one pin. Kind of maybe check it now and get a feel for it. Just got to be careful I don't touch these other pins. Oh yeah, it's loose as hell. It's super loose. So, we're gonna snug that up. I'm just smashing the inside. It's got like an angled piece I'm just taking that and I'm like pushing it down. Let's see if that worked. Sorry, I'll move my head in a second. You're good. Oh yeah, it's way better. Cool. Test light isn't on the like it wasn't on when you had that. It wasn't? No. It should have. I mean, I might be wrong. I didn't see it. As soon as I plug this in, that test light should light. I'm not seeing it. Me either. That's going to the pump. Am I on the wrong wire? Oh yeah, that's the wrong pin. So the one we're chasing, that's the control side of the relay that I just, I need the pink wire. That one was loose too, but that was not the right circuit. I'm well, glad. Way you fixed it. I'm glad you mentioned that. No, we need to pull out the pink wire. Thanks, Caleb. Sure. Because that saved like a major gaff in the video, man. You know? Yep. Yeah. It's still in this connector. We were just messing with the wrong pin. If that one's, yeah. if that one's loose, the other one's going to be loose too. Yeah. So, in fact, this whole connector is going to be that way. How did they get loose like that? It's a good question. It's a 1990 car, so that's my short answer. I get it. This pink wire in the middle. I remember it being pink and blue. What color is it? Pink with a black tracer do I have a pink and black tracer in here yes I do that guy that just pulled out that's not good that's my wire right there that one's looks spread too so that would be third one on the bottom third one in should be there it is yeah and this is a super uh, I wish I could show I don't think I can't show how loose that is this this terminal is super loose I mean I don't can you are you zoomed on that are you kind of getting a shot of that I mean and now that I moved it I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, like, not make contact. But that's the guy that we need to tighten up. And tightening that. Would be cool to take the inside of that apart. We'd see, like, little black marks on the connector where it was, like, making and breaking contact. I 
wonder if you can zoom on that right there, Caleb. Um, a little. I'm gonna have to dismount to zoom on that. Let me, give me a sec. Okay. I think that's where the clip was holding it in. So that's not gonna be. That's not gonna be like any kind of corrosion. That's where the black clip was holding the connector in place. But that's the part that I'm gonna push in and tighten that up. So to tighten this terminal, I'm just literally taking this. Actually, you can see the whole piece move. See that? Are you seeing that? Yeah, I see that. So that, it's actually, feels like this terminal's broken. It doesn't feel right. But that's the part I'm pushing in on in an attempt to, to close this back up. Okay, and that's third pin in. Bottom. There still loose, still super loose. Squeeze the crap out of that. There it is. Much better. I see that, yeah. Okay. Look, these weather pack seals, man. They're done. They're just falling apart, dry rotted. That's gonna suck. We'll fill that one with some liquid tape. Okay. Plugging this bad boy back in. Hoping that doesn't push out. There you go. Any future issues with this connector, that's gonna be something on this age of car, you just get rid of the connector. You'd literally, if you had to, take every one of those wires one at a time and jump them out with a, a new hardwired connector. That doesn't need to be there. So, let's get this thing back together. Forgot this connector, Caleb. Oh, yeah. That's the locking mechanism that keeps the locks from moving. I totally forgot about Me that. Me too. Okay, uh, I gotta bolt this cruise control unit back up, but I wanna start this, let you guys hear it run. <laughs> it always, this thing had a. All right, guys, so final wrap up here as you hear this car running. Um, one, that pin, that contact, if that one's loose on that connector, all of them are loose. They're gonna continue to have problems with that connector. The right thing to do would be do what we did, let the customer know, and then advise them on how you proceed from there. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you guys felt so inclined to replace that connector right now and rewire the whole thing um, Two, our test light Perfect troubleshooting tool. Yeah, I agree a voltage reading is better in certain circumstances We need the voltmeter the test light you can't tell by the brightness of the light whether or not you have a problem But these were these were go no go tests the, in both videos. We didn't need a voltage reading the test light told us what we needed to know. Um, what is, any other takeaways here, Caleb? Um, the test light test to battery positive checking circuit integrity is a huge test 
A lot of guys like to use an ohm meter for that. I prefer the test light. Great guide as to where our problem was with this. Final thing I would say, this has nothing to do with our previous pump failure. This was not a corroded circuit. Uh, this was make or break contact. And this was an issue where the terminal was tight enough as long as there was current flow that would keep it intact and it matches his symptoms when he shut the car off, tried to restart it. That's where your open circuit occurred. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Nice follow up to this same exact car. I wanna remind you guys, cause I get this from you a lot. Where's the, where's the video I'm referring to? There'll be little eye icons that show up in the corner of the screen. I'll put links in the description of this video for the previous repair on this same car so you guys can see that. One more time, foundational stuff I teach. Scanner Danner Premium, it's on my website. You can be part of it for a monthly subscription. There's still a 14 day free trial. You have nothing to lose to see what I have available. I can teach you these systems. I can teach you these fundamentals. Join me in my class remotely on Scanner Danner Premium. Again, it's on my website, www.scannerdanner.com. And there, right now, as of the day this is being filmed, there's 350 videos on there with uh, maybe 200 of them being a classroom lecture type setting where, for example, in this car, I'd teach you the fuel system, how it operates, how it's designed, that stuff about stuck closed regulators and, and uh, you know, amperage with a DC electric motor with low power and all that weird stuff. That's the time where we learn that stuff. And then in a case like this, we put it all together. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Special thanks to cameraman Caleb and for this turd car for providing us some great learning, uh, a great learning environment. Guys, I'll see you next time.